Hey, as you know, I'm really a fan of these cheap plastic toy cameras, these Holgas. I use them a lot. So I was really excited when Johnny from Helicord Camera, I put his link down to the description page so you can take a look at Johnny's work. When Johnny contacted me and asked if I wanted to take a look at his modification of a Holg, and he sends me this. Now, what Johnny has done, he has put an electronic shutter into a Holga. So, with the regular Holga, you really can't change the speed. It's either a bulb mode or then something else. Nobody knows what. One sixteenth, one hundredth of the second, depending on your Holga. But here you can accurately now set the, the speed of the shutter and that opens some neat new possibilities. So, as I am fan of Holgas, uh, I thought that let's really do a review of all mothers and see what I can do with this. I'm especially interested in seeing how this changes my photography and what new possibilities this gives to me. So Johnny added an electronic shutter, he also rebranded it. It's now called a Holgon. And then he wrote some Chinese on it. It says, uh, this is a very good camera. It takes awesome pictures. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. I don't know what it says. But hey, for a minute, I fooled you, didn't I? You thought that uh, now Ari speaks broken English, so I bet he also knows some Chinese. No, I don't. It doesn't open to me. I don't know what it says. But hey, how could this Holgon now improve my photography? Can, what can this camera do for me? So it all starts from the lens. Holgon still has this marvelous, beautiful Holga lens that renders everything smushy and awful, you know, in the corners and edges and in the middle. It is reasonably sharp. Reasonably sharp. I can't even say that word. Reasonably sharp. And that gives me interesting compositional possibilities. And I take pictures like this. So then, let's uh, use the electronic shutter here. So now I can accurately set the time from bulb and one second all the way up to 125. And this accurate exposure control allows me to do tricks with film that I would do with other cameras too, like for example pushing film. Here are a few examples where I pushed HP 5 Plus film to uh, 1600. Takes pictures like this. So, a marvelous Holger lens being able to accurately set the exposure time allows you now also to push the film accurately and do those kind of things. Now in many cases though, if you shoot black and white, uh, it's very forgiving for exposure errors. And especially if you develop your film using stand development, which I do with my regular Holger, that's pretty much the only way to develop film for Holgas, because as I said, you can't set the, you can't control the exposure. Stand development is a process where you put your film into a very mild developer and let it stand there for ages. So even if your frame is uh, underexposed or if it's overexposed up to say two stops, um, it sort of evens it out and, and you can live with it. With color film that kind of a stand development is not possible. So that's why now 
exposure control opens some new doors for color photography with a Holka. Um, especially if you shoot color positives, that is notoriously difficult to get the exposure right. There's very little latitude and very little room for error. And I actually found that for me Holka is almost impossible for color positives. So I wanted to try how is my Holgon. I took some expired Kodak Ektachrome Panther film that I found recently. Uh, I don't know how old this is. Uh, maybe 10, maybe 20 years old, who knows. With the color positive it doesn't matter. If you shoot expired color negative film you need to start adding exposure time as the film gets older. With, color with a color positive you don't. You always shoot it box speed. It sort of ages differently. So what I did was that I put my Holgon on a tripod went downtown, set the speed to half a second, that's what I measured and took a few pictures. They look like this. Now, I actually did a little modification to a Holgon myself. I glued uh, this cheap plastic leveling eye on top of my Holgon. So now if I put it like this on the ground, I can see, looking from upside here, that is it now leveled. That's really handy. I, I, I use a Holgon, Holga a lot not through the viewfinder, because this is just a rough estimation about what's going to be on a film. I, I just use it a lot from here, if I use it manually, like without the tripod. And then now with the tripod I have the leveling eye, so that's pretty handy. Moving on, number four, I guess, in my review. Hey, there's a really interesting thing now that you can do with a Holgon. When Johnny put the electronic shutter into this. Uh, he also put a Wi-Fi. Uh, there's, a, there's a chip inside that creates a Wi-Fi. Wireless, wire, why? I better learn some Chinese because I can't speak English anymore. Um, it creates a wireless bubble around the camera and then you can just take your phone and get connected to the camera and control it through your, your phone. Now, for those of you who know Arduino programming, uh, this is just a simple remote XY application. So it's not that fancy, but it does the job. So what you do is you turn your camera on and then you log on to the Wi-Fi this camera creates. The Wi-Fi is called Holgon. Yeah. And then you open this remote XY application. Here you log on to Holgon and it opens this UI. Basically what you can do from here, you can just uh, um, use the shutter or then, and then you can set the time also here. You can do the time settings from your camera. If you leave this off, if you turn it on, then you can do the time settings from here. So suddenly now you can, you know, shoot selfies and you can do all kind of cool stuff with this remote app and I took pictures like this Hey, moving on, uh, I guess number five now in my uh, review of Holgon, 
what can Holgon do for me? <laughs> um, when Johnny changed the shutter to an electronic, he also made the shutter release extremely sensitive and light. Now with the regular Holga you got a spring that you need to compress. And here is no springs, it's all assisted by batteries, so it's, it's, it is extremely light. Maybe even too light for some cases, but I thought like, okay, so this is extremely light and I do not need to separately engage, cock the shutter. So what can I do with this? And I came up with this artistic idea. I found a compositional idea, it's like... Um, like a horizon or like, like a perspective, leading lines. And I rotated the camera like that and took seven, ten exposures on top of each other. Now you can do that now very well with Holocon. First, because the shutter is extremely sensitive, so you can keep the camera really steady as you rotate it. And then you can easily calculate what's the exposure time for, say, seven exposures and then set the time right and, and get it spot on. Uh, I took pictures like this. So hey, I don't know if those pictures make any sense, that's up to you or up to me to judge, but you know, that is one trick that I can do with Holocon that is not possible with many other cameras, and I like those kind of things, that separate this from, from everything else. I'm really starting to like this. Then I noticed, moving on, I guess now number six. I don't know if this was Johnny's intention, but what you can do is that you can just remove the lens. And then what you can do, the shutter is down here, you can easily create a pinhole camera out of this. So what I did was that I took some tin foil. me a little piece of tin foil, get the size right, like this, and I got the extra unnecessary, as you can see I can't talk and use scissors at the same time, I mean that, that is clearly too difficult for me. So what I'm doing here is that I'm, I'm cutting this to the size of that lens opening. Like this. Let's, let's try it. Yeah, it fits in nicely. Then I take a needle. Just a little needle. It's easier to take it out from this hole with this needle. And then I, I make a little hole here. Now with pinhole cameras, don't be so excited about the size of the hole, it doesn't really matter. My trick is just to take a regular tin foil, put it on against your fingertip and then push regular needle just enough to feel it piercing the tin foil. Not, don't push it all the way through, just the tip of it. You know, somebody told me that the tip of your finger is the most sensitive part of your body. I don't know. But hey, suddenly here we have a pinhole camera. With no effort whatsoever and I took a few pictures like this.
<laughs> okay, and then next. Um, let's remove this pinhole lens. This is a disposable lens. Uh, I don't know why, but I... This is what I sort of discovered. You can create an unholy marriage with your Holgon and a Helios 44 lens. If you turn your Helios wrong way around, it fits perfectly into your Hulk. It's, it's just attached to the where the original lens was and now you have a macro lens for your Holgon out of Helios 44. Now what I did was that I took a Hasselblad um, crown glass and I put it back here and then I looked through the through the lens uh, on the crown glass and measure the distance from the lens. You know, where is it sharp? And it seems to be that it is exactly 12 and a half centimeters from the tip of the lens. I got a very narrow sharp area, but you know, I took a few macro pictures like this. Hey, if you want to try things like this, um, I suggest that you are really careful because I don't know how durable this new plastic here is. It seems to be 3D printed, so... Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm finding all kind of exciting use for, for Holgon and I like this a lot. But there are a couple of issues that I'm not a fan of. And in this kind of a review, you can also talk about those things, don't you? So the first thing that I, of course, don't like is the fact that it needs batteries. There are two batteries here inside. So the first of all, they are inside of the camera. So that means that if you... Uh, need new batteries and you are in the middle of the film. You can't do that easily. You kind of need to go to a dark place and remove the film first and only then you can change the batteries. Generally speaking, having batteries is not what I'm a fan of, but you know, you can't have an omelette if you don't break the eggs. <laughs> so now... Uh, Oh, what a stupid metaphor. But anywho, so now we got the batteries and you can live with those. The other thing is that there's no really way to tell if these batteries are okay, so they can suddenly run out. And even worse, there is no difference in the shutter feel or sound, regardless of if this is on or off or if there are batteries or no, it always feels the same. It always feels the same, the same clicky feeling. So these batteries, that's number one. Number two that I don't like that much is really the, the shutter uh, feeling. You know, I made those multiple exposures, so that's a goodie. But then in, in the regular use, it takes some time to get used to such a sensitive shutter. Maybe it's just me because I have those old cameras that you really need to push shutter hard, like my Craflexes. So maybe it's just my problem that it's so sensitive. Also, like you better turn it off if you put it into your bag, not only to save the batteries, but if it's on, you're gonna have some exposures from inside of your bag uh, because it's so sensitive. And then there's a third one, which is the Wi-Fi. I mean, there is this Wi-Fi and you can use it with an app, which is gorgeous. But it is really unreliable. There's no way of knowing whether you really have a connection or if you actually took the picture. I, in my first roll, I got a couple of empty frames because I pressed the shutter on my phone, but it didn't engage the shutter in my camera. So I missed a shot. But hey, 
I solved all those problems. I did a modification, my own modification on top of Johnny's modification of Holga. So what I did was that I opened this up. There's just an, a simple uh, ESP8266 chip inside of it. And I, with the help of Johnny, I found a place where I can get a little bit information out and I drilled a little hole on top of the hull gun and put a LED light here. And now what this LED light gives me, first of all when I turn on the camera it flashes so I can tell if the batteries are okay. Pretty cool. And then when I take pictures with the remote app it now flashes whenever I take a picture. So no more missed frames, because I can now see, even remotely, did I take the pitch. That's pretty cool. I like this a lot now with this modification. Uh, easy to do, done by myself. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> Johnny also put this... Um, I don't know what this is. This is kind of an adapter that goes on top of your lens. Like this. It's just a... Uh, that's just the glass. Now you can attach filters here. And it takes um, 46 millimeter filters. I have an ND1000 filter here. So suddenly you can have all kind of filters with your Holoka, which is also pretty cool. It just attach, you can just attach it here and... Huh. Little thing, but so remarkably nice. I like this a lot. Hey, so then there's one more thing that I think it's important, at least it's important for me, uh, when I'm pushing this hole gun to the extreme. Uh, when I take pictures with an ND filter, like ND1000, or I take those pinhole pictures, the exposure times can be extremely long. They were up to 10 minutes in some of those pictures. In a regular Holga, what I would do is that uh, for longer exposure times, you know, I have one of these frames that I can put on top of my regular Holga, like this. And I can attach an old fashioned um, remote shutter release cable, put it on top of my Holga and now suddenly I can do long exposures with this one. I can lock it and then I can release when the picture is done. Pretty easy. Now unfortunately this thingy doesn't fit on on a Holgon uh, for the reason that it's you know the shutter had made this chassis a little bit bigger. So then the only way for me to create long exposure times when I don't want to touch this camera during the exposure is to use the remote app. So this is what happens. I put this into a bulb mode, do the composition and then I take the remote app and I press the shutter. So you can see the light is on so now the shutter is open. Uh, then I first thought that, hey, I need to stay here for 10 minutes and keep on pressing this button because the minute I release it, it closes the shutter. So do I really need to stay there for 10 minutes? And then I figure out the way to do it. You actually keep your finger on top of this knob and then you press, press with your other hand or other finger the close, app, close button up here. And it closes the main view and now you can just, you know, close your phone and go away. And as you can see the light is still on, the shutter is still open. And you can wait for your 10 minutes or whatever. And then when you come back, if you have disconnected from the Wi-Fi bubble, the shutter keeps open, you just need to reconnect again. Or then you open the Holgon app and it closes the shutter. So with this little close button in the left upper corner, while same time pressing the shutter, with this close you can set the 
time for bulk mode and walk away and leave your phone there for the longest time. Which is actually something that kind of accidentally I figured out, which is a pretty cool thing. A couple of things before I actually tell you the summary. Uh, the first thing is that uh, there's no longer an aperture setting. Like in the original Holga you can set the aperture, it's a cloudy and sunny. That's no longer possible here. Uh, you don't miss a lot. I mean, even here it's pointless, it's meaningless. Uh, Johnny told me that this is about f13 and that's how I should measure it. He also says that the original Holka, even though the advertisement says f8 to f11, that's false advertisement and it is closer to f13. I measured this f13 and I got excellent exposure, so I guess Johnny is right also about that. Also, uh, when I open this, uh, if you want to open this and do your own modification, there are a couple of screws that you need to open. There's one here and then there are two below the fill advance crank. As you can see, I, I drilled two holes there because there are two screws. And only then afterwards I realized that one hole would have been enough because you can rotate this. But I'm not that clever. I accidentally made two holes. So the verdict. I like this. I like this so much that when I, after I had shot the first roll and really fell in love with, with the Holgon, I went downtown and shot one roll really carefully and explicitly wanted to get certain look and feel. Because I have now this exhibition going on that opened a week ago and I had just enough time to make one more print. And I make a print out of that picture that I took with the Holgon and I think I personally like that picture the most in my exhibition. It's like this. So Holgon, uh, probably not the best camera in the world, requires a little bit uh, of an attitude with all its quirks and all its shortcomings, but it, clear, it clearly is a creative tool and to me that's the most important thing, that's actually the only thing that matters in camera. Can it, uh, can it let you be more creative? Does it do things to you that no other camera can do? And, and hold on can. Thanks, Johnny. You are my hero. <laughs> hey, thanks for, for joining and next time something else. Take care.